It is significant that the only time that it's mentioned in the Quran is in Surah al safat and it is the the narrative in the Quran is different in some very important respects from the narrative in the Bible. I told you several times before that um, the differences in, in the, between the Quran and the Bible in the details uh, are far more important than the similarities. And in the Bible, I mean, there, there are many differences, but the, the, the biggest difference is that in the Bible, Ibrahim sees a, has a dream, becomes convinced that this is what God is commanding, and he binds his child and he proceeds to sacrifice his child until the last minute he gets the sacrificial lamb. In the Quran, Ibrahim informs his son that this is what he has been commanded. And it is his son who tells him to proceed with the sacrifice. So his son is not forced into it. And it is a decision on part of both Ibrahim and his son of this event. And something that has to be underscored. One of the main problems that Ibrahim had with his people was human, the practice of human sacrifice to idols. And as we know in human history, unfortunately, human sacrifices is a well-documented, universal, international around the world part of human history ancient history it was practiced in sham it was practiced in iraq it was practiced in yemen it was practiced in south america it was practiced all over europe it was practiced everywhere and the narrative of the sacrifice and the became in in Islamic, especially Islamic legal discourses, um, and to a less lesser extent in Jewish legal discourses, a locus for the argument that once that the that the whole symbolic dynamic is that the non-believers were willing to sacrifice the children to appease the idols to get people to stop sacrificing their children you needed to make a moral point. It is not that Ibrahim was any weaker than you guys, because obviously if Ibrahim is not going to sacrifice, his, if, if Ibrahim comes and says you can't sacrifice your children, the obvious response is, well, it's because you're weak and you love your child and you don't want to sacrifice your child. This, interestingly, I mean, in, in, in law you find it argued quite often, but in tafsir literature you don't find it uh, said that often. I found it in one of the Sufi tafsir um, that 
the point of this entire thing was that to say Ibrahim in principle would have been willing to sacrifice his child the same way that you guys sacrifice your children. However, God doesn't accept child sacrifice. And God only accepts the sacrifice of animals, specific animals, even in Jewish law as well, rather than human beings. Now, the main difference in Jewish law and Islamic law here is that in Islamic law, there is a higher stage of moral development in that God doesn't accept the sacrifice because it benefits God in any way. But the sacrifice, in order to be accepted by God, it has to go to the destitute and the poor and the needy. In Jewish law, you don't have, the sacrifice doesn't have to go to the needy. In Jewish law, it which reflects an older legal system, a, a more primitive level of moral development, you can sacrifice the animal to, in the sake of God and, and burn it, and burn the carcass. <clears throat> or you can sacrifice the animal and bury it. Or you can sacrifice the animal and throw it in the sea. In Islam, that would be a sin. In Islamic law, that would be a clear sin. You can't do that. The only, if in fact, if you kill the animal, you have to, you, you can't kill it and just destroy it. But more so, if you want it to be accepted by God, by God, you have to feed the needy. You can't feed, for instance, the class of rabbis, as was often the practice in the temple, is that the animal would be sacrificed and the meat would go to the rabbinic class. In, and and it's, uh, that's one of the things that Jesus is unhappy with um, when uh, Jesus is in the temple, is that he's unhappy with the, 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 the fact that animals are sacrificed and the um, guardians of the temple gorge themselves on the meat of animals. So, it took things, stages of development. First, the prohibition of human sacrifice, and then in Islamic law, that the sacrifice must in, purposely go to the needy in order for it to even have any place with God. The reason I pause at this is that we're not going to encounter this again in any other surah, the surah to Safat. But it is important to understand because when I hear modern Muslims, as I heard in the mosque in New Jersey, the imam stand there and say in a khutbah, we Muslims are willing to sacrifice our sons and, and number one, you're not a prophet. So there is no context in which you're going to get revelation to sacrifice your son. Two, human sacrifice has ended a long time ago and this is the whole thing that Ibrahim three is that it's not a matter of you sacrifice it, it was the the purposeful and full-fledged participation of the child and in some reports even with the reluctance of Ibrahim and the urging of the son that this was so in, in other words, you know, the, the vulgar way that I hear modern Muslims talk about it offends me. And that's why I'm spending all this time on it. You know, you either understand it fully or just shut up about it. You know, if you're ignorant about something, just don't talk about it. Or just study it fully and understand all its nuances. 